six months after the Normandy landings cracked the walls of Hitler's fortress Europe, all the news was of enemy defeat. The Belgian front was quiet. The ghost front, they called it. For the big attack? Yes, sir, Colonel, I do. Well, that doesn't work in the army. I'm recommending you for transfer to a desk in Washington. You can tell the president how to run the war. German surrender was merely a matter of time. Everyone knew it. Everyone except the Nazi generals. In a vast underground city, the German general staff, with every comfort provided, was massing its strength for one last all-out onslaught. Unusual clock, isn't it? It has only one cycle, 50 hours. We have the resources for 50 hours full-scale attack. At the black heart of their mad plan was an army of monsters only such twisted genius could have mounted against humanity. From out of the forest where they lay unsuspected, from every ridge surrounding the overconfident allies, from all sides, without warning, in numbers never imagined, came the clanking Tiger tanks. They came spewing a wall of irresistible fire, riding on a tide of allied blood. The first phase of our offensive was a success. The element of surprise was complete, American communications are in a turmoil. But we must cross the Ore River before the enemy realizes we have launched an all-out offensive. We're staying. Counterman that order to fall back. From this moment, all units are to make a stand wherever they are and fight. And that means everybody. Clerks, cooks, bakers, staff officers. Anybody who can carry a rifle is to use it. Don't you want to kiss me? Commander of Bastogne to the German commander. Nuts. Nuts. This is where the Nazis almost won. This is the reign of hell they called the Battle of the Bulge.